Welcome to our interview series at MDX 2019 here in Austin, Texas. Joining us now is Byron Crowell. Byron Crowell has been at the forefront of email marketing and B2B lead generation since founding Solution Publishing in 2001. The smart stream platform he helped build was one of the first scalable content marketing engines in the industry. Recently, his focus has revolved around strategies to add call center services to the production of online initiated leads to improve data accuracy and quality. Solution Publishing delivers content in over 20 countries and six languages, which has placed Byron at the epicenter of data privacy strategy, including GDPR, such that he spent significant time developing expertise in how to navigate and positively leverage this dangerous business terrain. After spending 15 years in Los Angeles building his company, Solution Publishing recently moved locations to Tampa, Florida. Welcome, Byron. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So, with the abundance of data, how do you distinguish between relevant and irrelevant data? Well, in B2B, there's two types of data, right? There's contact data, mm -hmm. right, which is, you know, how you get a hold of somebody and, and who they are and what their title is mm -hmm. and, uh, and those things. That's got to be the, the centerpiece of any sort of data strategy in B2B. Uh, you have to make sure that's, that's key. You have to get that right. Then there's behavioral data, mm -hmm. and that's anything. And you don't really don't even know necessarily what it is until you're, you've tested a lot of things and you understand your business and, and, and what it is that you're marketing. So that can be intent data, and that can be email marketing data, and that can be almost anything, geographical data. They've, you know, some companies have used all sorts of things that you'd never expect. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of this comes down to testing different data sources on the, on the uh, behavioral front mm -hmm and seeing if there's a correlation. And that gets to you know, data science and analysis and then a lot of testing. Awesome. So how can companies and data analysts ensure that they're collecting and compiling data according to the right parameters? Well, the short answer that I would say is they can't, uh, <laughs> right. right? They can't. Uh, and, and this entire process is a, a giant um, experiment, mm -hmm. right? So you, you collect as much data as you can uh, across all swaths of of sources and anything that might be relevant, even if you can't even think about directly how it might be relevant. There may be secondary and tertiary characteristics to your data or to, to a data source that is relevant to your business. Absolutely. Bring it in, test it, right? run your regressions, run your panels, and, and see if it's, if it's good or not, and then you'll find out. So, often. Yep. Cool, so two concepts that people often confuse are data mining and data profiling. How do you define and differentiate those two terms? Well, so data mining is, you know, <clears throat> the process of taking a, a large, you know, big data set mm -hmm. and then looking for these correlations and uh, uh, correlations and, and, and things that if you, and levers, if you push this, this happens. Not sure why, but it turns out that these two things are correlated. You don't know if they're directly correlated. There may be things in between that you got to tease out. Absolutely. So that's one thing. And then when you get to things like uh, personas, mm -hmm. where you take that data and you draw it into uh, clusters and you say, these people are like, are alike. Mm -hmm. These other people are like, you're not even sure why, but right. they cluster into clumps and you can almost sort of visualize it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really the difference between those two things. Awesome. So what are some of the best tools that people can use for data collecting and data filtering? There's a lot of them out there, and, and most of them are good. Uh, <clears throat> the, the hardest part these days um, is that the cat and mouse game about getting data off the internet, mm -hmm. scraping, harvesting, all those things, mm -hmm. uh, is, is a, a, an ongoing sort of siege warfare situation, right? right? They're trying to defend their data, mm -hmm. whoever they is, uh, any of the, the standard um, you know, bases that are out there. Uh, we're trying to, to do things to get at that data. Um, tons of tools out there, mm -hmm. tons of techniques. Some of it gets into, you know, best sort of secret sauce and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, there, there's a lot of great stuff out there. And, and most of them, frankly, you can use for a long time for free. So, yeah. Awesome. So what is one major piece of advice that you would give to uh, data analysts so they can make the most of their data? I would say uh, <laughs> try to think outside the box. Mm -hmm about data sources that uh, don't have a direct correlation to your business. Mm -hmm. And bring them in and run analysis on them. It's, it takes a lot of time, but often, this is what, you know, the reason why Amazon and Facebook and these guys are so powerful is that they have these gigantic wide data sets mm -hmm. where they can run these sort of experiments and find out that, 
It turns out that somebody walks their dog three days a week, by Chevys. Mm -hmm. Why? No idea. But mm -hmm. that turns out to be true. So as B2B people, right, th that stuff is available to us. Mm -hmm. But you got to, you know, really be more broad minded about bringing in more sets of data. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Byron, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. You bet. Thanks.